Hello Year 9, it's Mr Sacco here. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to have a go at practicing the past tense. Um, we're going to look at the rules for the past tense, how to build your sentences, um, and then we're going to have a look at a few examples including a little listening task. So let's make a start then. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the rule for the perfect tense and we're going to do that by comparing um, how to use the past tense in English and in German and we're going to look at the form that is most similar to the German so that we can um, build the perfect tense in German easier by looking at what it kind of corresponds with in English. So what I want you to think about is how many different ways we have to say that we played badminton yesterday. So you met up with a friend, you played badminton, and then you might be writing it down in your diary or you're texting someone, you're telling them, yesterday I played badminton. So I've already given you one option there, but let's have a look at how many ways that we have to say that in English. So as you can see, we've got, I played badminton, I have played badminton, I had played badminton, I was playing badminton, I have been playing badminton, and I had been playing badminton. So um, we don't use all of those in kind of our everyday life as much. Um, so I think a lot of us wouldn't say I had been playing badminton. We might just say I played badminton yesterday. Um, in German, we are going to look at the kind of simple form of the perfect tense and that corresponds with I have played badminton and you're going to see in a minute why this is such an important um, form because it's got the I have in there so in German we would say ich habe Federball gespielt so this is the one that's most similar to the English I have played badminton the only difference being really is that we have got the played that you can see here um, we've changed it around obviously we've turned to play into played in German that corresponds with gespielt and the difference here is that it actually is at the end so we always send um, what we call the past participle to the end okay so let's have a look at our pap past tense sandwich then. I'm going to talk you through what the essential parts of any past tense sentence in German are and um, what you can do as a little exam strategy to make sure that you get full marks on using past tense. Okay, so in order to build our sentence, or we're going to use the image of our sandwich, what we need are um, three important parts. So the first one is the person. Okay, so you're going to have to say who did something. In our case, now we're just using ich for I. Then you need what we call the auxiliary. That basically is just the correct form of haben, to have. So in our case, that would be ich habe. Um, think of it as the filling in your sandwich. There's going to be some other fillings that we're going to add in a little while, but this is the most important one. And then the basis of our sandwich is the past participle and um, past participle is just a fancy way of saying that it's a verb that is in the past tense okay so in english we turn um i play into i have played we just add an ed to the end of play in german there are some patterns um as well and we're going to look at them in a little while because I've got some examples here for you that you hopefully recognise um, from year seven and eight, as well as year nine. So we've got ich habe gespielt, ich habe gemacht, ich habe gekauft, ich habe gesehen, ich habe gehört and ich habe gegessen. So what I want us to focus on now are the patterns that we can recognise here. So the first one that we hopefully can see is the fact that they all have the ich habe part. So we've got habe here, it's in the um, second position, so it's the second idea as any verb usually is in German. So ich habe here for every single one of them. And then the next thing you might notice is that when we look at the past participle, so the form of the verb in the past tense, 
all start with GE. There we go. So that's something that we need to remember straight away when we're about to use the past tense is that we usually start with GE. Then we've got something of a pattern in that a lot of them. Okay, and keep in mind they are always irregular verbs that we have to learn. But if we keep on top of them, um, we are able to kind of recycle them quite a lot throughout your 10s and 11s. So as you can see, these three and gehört all have a T at the end. And then we've got two little exceptions here, which are I have seen that turns into ich habe gesehen. And I have eaten, ich habe gegessen, where we have an N instead of a T. So the important part is to remember um, to learn these, to know that they are different. Um, okay. So what I would do if I was in an assessment or an exam is write a list very similar to this one. So write down a list on some scrap paper of the past tense sandwich of those past tense phrases. And then what you're going to do is you're going to use them in your writing. OK, the reason I would make a list is because often what happens is we start the sentence off with ich habe and then we're going to give all the information who we played football with, where we played it um, and so on. And then we forget about that last part, the past participle. So our sandwich then does not have a bottom. OK, so use this as almost like a tick list um, for your assessments. And every time you've used them, you can tick them off. OK, I have obviously left some dots here, which is where all that extra information would go. So that's all the extra filling in your sandwich. All of that goes in between this phrase. But without them, without the person, the auxiliary and the past participle, you are not going to get full marks for showing um, that you can write a sentence in the past tense. OK, so once you've got this list and you've learned them well, you will feel a lot more confident in writing and speaking German. OK, so keep in mind, you always need these three parts. OK, they are always going to be in any past tense sentence. Now, saying that, we already have noticed that there are a couple of exceptions. We call them um, irregular verbs, so gesehen and gegessen. And it's quite normal in any language that we have those. Um, but there is one big exception coming up in a second that I would like us to talk about, which is how to say where you went in the past in German. OK, so here we have our exception, OK, which is whenever we want to say that we went somewhere. So this concerns any time we want to say that there's been so, some sort of movement. We went to um, school, we went into town, we went to Manchester, um, whatever that might be. So whenever you've got a verb of movement, so you want to say you went somewhere, um, you need to use a slightly different form. So I'm going to just start off with looking at um, the English. So in English, we don't say in the past tense, I go to the shop. OK, so we don't just add the ED on. We add something on that is completely different or it looks completely different. So I go turns into I went. In German, it's similar in a way that there is a different form. So instead of saying ich habe, we always say ich bin gegangen. OK, so whenever you want to say that you went somewhere, I want you to tell yourself I went to the bin. I went to the bin. Obviously, you're not going to write the sentence, I went to the bin. You're going to say that you went to school instead or you went into town. But the important thing that any teacher or examiner is going to look for is, did they use bin instead of harbour? OK, so this is one that we're just going to have to learn. And I also would suggest that you always add the ich bin gegangen onto your list of past tense phrases or past tense sandwiches so that you have got that at the beginning of your assessment or your exam and then you can take it off. You can still obviously add in all the extra bits of information, um, where you went, who with and when you did that. But you need to have these parts correctly. The ich, the bin and gegangen. Without those, you're not going to form the past tense successfully. So please make sure that you practice this really carefully and that you know when to use it. OK, so 
I'm going to do a little bit of a listening task. All I want you to do is have a good look at those sentences. So you might want to pause the video here so that you can just read through them. And then I'm going to say um, some of those phrases in German in a random order. And I want you just to try and match them. So just write down or say out loud to yourself which number sentence they are. The point of this is that we're just going to keep repeating that past tense phrase. OK, so you might want to pause it here and then I'm going to go straight into reading them out randomly. So the first sentence I'm going to read out is the following. Ich habe mit meinen Freunden Fußball gespielt. I'm going to say it one more time. Ich habe mit meinen Freunden Fußball gespielt. Okay, so this one is sentence number seven. I played football with my friends. And the next one. Ich habe am Sonntag Kuchen und Kekse gegessen. Ich habe am Sonntag Kuchen und Kekse gegessen. All right, so that's sentence number four. I ate cakes and biscuits on Sunday. And the third one along. Ich habe in meinem Zimmer Musik gehört. Ich habe in meinem Zimmer Musik gehört. This is sentence number two. Next one. Ich habe die Nachrichten gesehen. Ich habe die Nachrichten gesehen. Okay, that's sentence number six. Ich habe letztes Wochenende meine Hausaufgaben gemacht. Ich habe letztes Wochenende meine Hausaufgaben gemacht. Okay, this is sentence number three. I have done my homework last weekend. Okay, second to last now. Ich habe gestern in der Stadt neue T-Shirts gekauft. Ich habe gestern in der Stadt neue T-Shirts gekauft. Okay, this is sentence number one. I bought new T-Shirts in town yesterday. And the last one. Ich bin neulich in die Stadt gegangen. Ich bin neulich in die Stadt gegangen. Okay, that is sentence number five. Okay, and as you can see, this is the one where we've got where we've got bin and ge. So we need to make sure that whenever we say we went somewhere, in this case into town recently, we use ich bin gegangen. Okay, so I'm going, um, going to stick with these examples, with those phrases. Now, as you can see, we've got our PAP structure here for every single one of them. So we've got kind of the um, top and the bottom um, bread for our sandwich, the basics, what we need in order for it to be a successful pasta and sandwich. And there's lots of information in between. So all of that can go in between your harbour and your past participle. OK, so that might be a time phrase. So here we've got gestern, yesterday, letztes Wochenende, last weekend, am Sonntag. So that's on Sunday. That's therefore referring to the past tense and neulich, which is recently. OK, as you can see, all these time phrases follow immediately after harbour. OK, so we've got harbour and bin as the second idea. And then the next idea along uh, in the case of these four sentences is the time phrase. OK, you still have your pap sandwich even if the information is where you did something. OK, so we're here we have in der Stadt, in town, in meinem Zimmer, in my room, or in die Stadt, so have gone into town. 
Okay, so as you can see, again, they are in the middle, but your pap sandwich is still the same. It also goes for what it is that you have done in the past. So whether that's having bought new t-shirts in sentence number one, um, whether it's your homework that you did in sentence number three, or in sentence number six, the fact that you watched the news. Okay, so again, make sure that you've got your pap sandwich correct and then you can start thinking about adding more examples. You need to kind of build your sentence. So you need to start with the harbour and the past participle, and then you can add in all the lovely sandwich fillings. Okay, and last thing is obviously who with. So we want you to include all this information, um, but in this case, we just have an example here of who you've played football with. And again, harbour gespielt, it's all staying in the same way. So the next task I would like us to have a go at is a delayed dictation. So um, if I taught you in year nine this year, you will recognize these. So what I'm going to do is I will read some sentences out in German and you must write them down, but you have to wait 10 seconds each time before you write them down. So you want to keep the sentence that I've just said in your head for 10 seconds and then write it down. Um, what you might want to do, therefore, is to pause the video after I read the sentence out twice and then keep it in your head, focusing on that past tense sandwich and write down your sentence. Um, please don't panic too much about the spelling, especially around the words in the middle. Um, for now, the focus is on our pap sandwich. So let's start with our delayed dictation. So pen and paper at the ready. Just listen, I'm going to read them twice. I'm going to say the sentences out loud twice. Wait 10 seconds, keep them in your head, write them down, and then we're going to move on and then we'll check them at the end. Okay, so let's go. First sentence. Ich bin in die Schule gegangen. Ich bin in die Schule gegangen. So wait 10 seconds, keep it in your head. And then write it down on your piece of paper or whiteboard. Okay, sentence number two. Ich habe neulich meinen Computer benutzt. I'm going to read it out again a bit slower. Ich habe neulich meinen Computer benutzt. Number three. Wir haben einen Salat gegessen. Wir haben einen Salat gegessen. Number four. Ich habe ab und zu Volleyball gespielt. Ich habe ab und zu Volleyball gespielt. Number five. Meine Mutter hat einen Liebesfilm gesehen very long one, so I'll read that one out again. Meine Mutter hat einen Liebesfilm gesehen. And last sentence. Ich habe am Wochenende drei DVDs gekauft. Ich habe am Wochenende drei DVDs gekauft. Okay, so you might want to replay some of those. You might want to pause the videos, take the time that you need. Just don't try and skip forward um, and cheat because the point of it is to practice that past and structure and to get your brains trained to listening to the end so that we make sure we always have the past participle there. Okay, so I'm going to put the answers up now. All right, so 
check your answers focus in particular on the past tense structure so if the kind of sandwich filling in the middle um, if you've got a couple of spelling errors correct them but please don't stress too much about those what we want to look for is the bread of our sandwich so ich bin in die schule gegangen ich habe neulich meinen computer benutzt wir haben einen salat gegessen ich habe ab und zu which is now and then volleyball gespielt and then this one was a little bit of a challenge because it was referring to another person a third person meine mutter hat so she has einen liebesfilm gesehen so my mother has watched a love film and then lastly ich habe am wochenende drei dvds gekauft okay so have a good look at those make sure you've got those basics of the past tense correct um, you might want to as a little extension or challenge have a go at translating those into english and then maybe um, pause the video or close your laptop computer and translate them back into german and then check your answers again so anything that means you're going to use these phrases past tense phrases repeatedly will be very useful at the moment because as we're going into gcse we're going to have to use these again and again and they really are um, an important part in getting you the most marks and getting you a grade um, that you deserve so stay on top of the past tense if you've got any questions get in touch with either me or with any of the german teachers and yeah i hope you're doing well and see you very soon